Now, do I personally think that these bad boys right here are worth $200? Now, again, y'all already know me, man. I'm always going to keep it 100 with you guys, man, because I'm always put you guys first. And my answer to that is... Yo, what up, y'all? All right, so I've been using the Sony Pulse Explorers here for over two weeks now, man, and I really, really wanted to test these bad boys out and give them a fresh shake before I just fully pass judgment on these bad boys and let you guys know if I personally feel that these are worth for you guys to get right now. So with that being said, man, I'm gonna be honest with y'all, man, I made a mistake in my initial video right up here. Some things that I talked about in that video was right, and there was a whole lot of things in there that was actually wrong. So I'm going to clear all of that up in this video right here. So let's discuss it. All right. So the first thing I want to actually start off talking about with these, and that is the price. Now, do I personally think that these bad boys right here are worth $200? Now, again, y'all already know me, man. I'm always going to keep it 100 with you guys, man, because I'm always put you guys first. And my answer to that is no. Oh, yeah. We're going to get right into it, man. Ain't no fluff over here, baby. I just got to be real with y'all. But if you guys did spend $200 on these, then I'm be honest with y'all I do understand why you did it there's a couple things in this video right here that we're gonna talk about as to why I feel that these are overpriced in my opinion but I think if they were around somewhere like the $150 mark I feel like these would have actually been a much easier sale let's go ahead and break it all the way down now the next thing I want to talk about and that is the design now to me I actually have a love-hate relationship when it comes to the design of these buds right here. Uh, the first thing I want to start off with and talking about, and that is just the overall look and feel of it from a design stamp from a design standpoint. First thing is the look of it. I definitely think that it follows the whole PlayStation brand, as you guys know, with this whole white theme that we, you know, pretty much used to when it comes to the PS5 and the PS5 Slims. They kind of have that whole look to them, and to be honest. I like this look, especially when it comes to the gaming space. I, I, I love them. I think they dope. But where it all goes wrong for me, for my ears, is like the fit of them. First off, in the package, I feel like they don't give you any type of like instructions on how to actually properly wear these. Um, and to me, it's kind of a big deal, especially since these have a very unique design uh, that most people are just not used to. And wearing these properly, I'm gonna tell you right now, it's the key to either enjoying these or hating these, like 100% when it comes to the audio quality, which we're gonna get into that here in a second. So for those of you guys that are out there that are wondering, I'll admit it, man, I was actually wearing these bad boys wrong in my initial unboxing video, but as I continue to actually test these out, which is why I come back and I do these follow-up videos for you guys, because I quickly found out how you should actually really wear them, and I'm about to show you that right now. Now, how these actually work is this part right here, I'm gonna go ahead and show it on the top down here, this part right here should be facing forward. So if I turn to the side right here, this piece right here should be facing forward. So if I stick these right in my ears like this, this piece right here should always be going straight forward. And hopefully I got them forward right here so you can see it. But if not, then you get, you get what I'm saying. But this piece right here should always be facing forward. That's going to give you the most sealed and secure fit. And then if I do the same thing over here, if I just put these in my ears, the first thing that I would do, stuff them in like this, and then just make sure this piece is facing forward forward because that's what's going to give you that seal and secure fit but even with wearing them the correct way another issue that i actually have with them is actually staying in my ears to me i constantly felt when i was gaming i had to continue to readjust them and to me that's just not the wave especially when you guys like in the middle of a battle like i've been playing this god of war right here man and when i'm in the middle of a battle i don't want to have to continue just readjusting them uh which in that case man could cost you your life in the game now i do plan on actually scooping up some phone tips because those actually tend to work a little bit better over silicone in my opinion so if you guys have any recommendations for that let me know down in the comment section below and i'll definitely check them out but i do got one in mind that i plan on scooping up and i'll let you guys know uh when i actually get those in and try them out here on the channel now last thing i want to actually mention when it comes to the fit uh, and just kind of comfortability of these and that is make sure that you guys before you even start doing any gaming on these bad boys right here make sure you guys find your right fit when it comes to the ear tips because i promise you man this is going to make or break your experience when it comes to these earbuds right here um now for me i had to actually kind of switch out and put on kind of like the medium to large uh style that they have here in the case now they defaulted with kind of like this 
smaller to medium size right here in the middle. And to me, that didn't really work for me. So I did have to swap these out and just kind of find my fit. So that's why I say it's important, man, to make sure you guys find the right fit that's gonna work for you. Otherwise, I'm telling you, it's gonna kill your experience and you're gonna be wanting to return these right off the jump. And again, PlayStation, if there was some way that you guys could come out with some type of documentation, maybe put it into the packaging or maybe the Gen 2 model and show people how these actually are supposed to fit into your ears because I'm telling you right now, a lot of people out there, include myself, when I first tried these, I was wearing them wrong because there's literally nothing that tells you how to actually wear these unique like design ear tips and got some, ah. Hey man, don't mind, don't mind a little earwax. <laughs> but yeah, there's nothing in the packaging that's gonna show you how to actually wear these, but lucky for y'all, you know what I mean? You got me, so I'm gonna show you how to wear them. <laughs> now, speaking of trying things out, right? Let's go ahead and get into the audio quality, man, on why I actually feel that these shouldn't have been $200. For me, at first, i am be honest with y'all, man, the audio was not good in my opinion, but a lot of that had to deal with the fact of what I just talked about, and that was wearing them wrong, and I wasn't actually able to hear the audio, how it was actually designed to be heard. But after really trying them out, really testing them out during this two-week time frame, and just playing multiple games on a witch, I'm gonna tell y'all right now, I am heavy. And I mean heavy on this God of War of Valhalla right now, man. I'm telling you, this DLC is dope. But it is hard as hell, man, because I keep dying and then I have to start all the way back over at the beginning in the gate. And, you know, I need help, y'all. <laughs> but anyway, man, after my testing, I would say the audio quality is decent for sure. Now, are they better than something like my Sony Endzone Buds? If you guys want to know that, I broke everything down in this video right up here that you can see up in that video right there. I highly, highly recommend you guys watch that video if you guys are stuck between which one that you guys should buy. But for me, I just felt like since these are supposed to have the whole planar magnetic drivers in them that I would get like that wow moment, right? Like I was looking for that grade A top tier audio quality that just would wow me. And to be fair and to be honest with y'all, I didn't feel like I got that with these uh, when it comes to it being top tier audio. Now, is it bad? No, I don't think it's bad by any means, but it's just not at the level of that wow level that I was expecting it to be. Like my thoughts was I was going to put these bad boys in, it's going to have it was going to blow me away, deep bass, clarity levels was going to be good, and I just didn't feel like the bass levels were all there for me in comparison to other earbuds and headphones that I've tried and just used on a daily basis. Now, if they would have just added just a smidge, and I mean just a smidge more of deep bass for the low ends, then I feel like it would have drastically improved these for me. Again, they do not sound bad. They just don't give you that wow factor that you might think that it might give you, if that makes sense. Now, the next thing I actually wanna talk about with these, and that is the battery life, because you know we gotta talk about it. Now, there's no if, ands, or buts about it, y'all. The battery life on these bad boys right here literally is only gonna last you four and a half to five hours of gameplay, and trust me, it is capped at that mark. You ain't getting five and a half or nothing over. Now, I was hoping that it would at least get me somewhere around like, I would say like the six to eight hour mark. Now, is five hours bad? Well, to me, I honestly think that depends on what you guys deem is actually good. Now, if you only like to play your games for maybe four and a half to five hours, then I think the battery life for you might actually be fine for you. But if you're somebody that's like me and you like to play, you know, these games like this for a long time and kind of be on them for a little while, then I feel like the battery life kind of came up a little bit on the short side, especially since there's no real like standout features um, that would cause PlayStation to actually limit its battery life to only five hours. For example, I might actually understand it if these had like active noise cancellation in them. And the reason why I say this is because these are actually being sold as the sole usage purpose of the PlayStation Portal for your audio. And yeah, you can still use them for your PS5 and all of that um, because it uses that proprietary PlayStation Link technology, which we're gonna touch on that here in a second. But let's say for example, right? Like let's say you hop on a plane, you traveling from the East Coast to the West Coast. Chances are these bad boys right here, battery life is just not gonna last you that entire flight, which that that means now you got to try to find something to do with your time you know on that plane which is a problem for me especially since I know for myself and maybe you guys out there you travel a lot when it comes to your job or you know just leisure time or whatever you guys like to do again is it bad no I don't think it's bad I just would have expected more battery life out of these since the features in these are somewhat basic now speaking of features let's go ahead and dive into that here for a second right now there's not a lot of features in these when it comes to gaming earbuds. So 
you have your volume rockets, right? That's the first thing I want to kind of talk about. Now, if you guys look right here, you can see you got your volume rockets here on both sides of the earbuds. Now, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm not a huge fan of how small the volume rockers on here are. Now, again, I get why they made them small because they kind of wanted to keep this whole minimum look uh, and design to these. But whenever I'm gaming, I felt like it's tough to actually be able to find these buttons because they're so small. I would have actually liked if PlayStation would have somehow taken a play out of the Sony Endzone Buds book and maybe make the Pulse Explorers more of a touch active versus it being like physical buttons that we see here. Because to me, man, when it comes to touch features, when they done right, they're so much better than using like physical button. So hopefully, hopefully we'll see in the Gen 2 model or the version of these that we'll get more of like the touch assistant needs versus like physical buttons. Also, I would have liked if there was like a game chat or mixer feature that's going to allow us to be able to mix in our game and chat audio right from either the earbuds or be able to mix it on a PS5. And the reason why I say this is because let's say we got something like our DualSense Edge Pro Controller. When they came out with the DualSense as Pro Controller, that was a controller. Let me go ahead and grab it real quick. All right, we're back. <laughs> when they came out with the DualSense Edge Pro Controller that you guys are seeing right here, they created a whole new software inside of the PlayStation software that allows you guys to be able to easily uh, set the buttons, be able to change the configurations of the buttons on this controller and set different profiles and just a bunch of other things that they gave us inside of the software for this controller that I felt like they could have gave us for these buds right here. And I felt like if they would have gave us some type of like EQ settings or something like that inside from a software perspective of the PlayStation, I think that would have been so dope, man, uh, for them to give us that. So then that way we can adjust the base levels, um, adjust the, the mid levels and the high ends and different things like that to be able to tweak the audio or even maybe have like different profiles for us to be able to set for these. I think that would have made these so much better um, than what we got. And again, maybe this is something that is going to be coming in the future with these. I don't know. Only time will tell with that. But as for right now, you don't get that at all when it comes to these right here. And I felt like that is a huge miss on PlayStation's part. Also, another thing I would have liked when it comes to these earbuds right here, and that is the ability to be able to mute your microphone right from the earbuds, which is a feature that we don't get. Now, I do understand that we can just press the mute button right here to be able to mute your microphone, which is all fine and dandy. But again, these are $200. I would expect that to be a feature on the actual buds in itself. Maybe if they would have included it to where as you can press the uh, up as well as the down volume buttons at the same time and that would mute it. I feel like that would have been a much easier feature um, versus just not having it at all. Now, one thing I got to do, and that is give credit where credit is due, and that is getting your battery percentage as well as the volume levels to pop up and within the software on your PlayStation screen is dope to me when these are connected up. Another feature that I personally think is the shining start of these, man, and that is the ability to simultaneously connect these up to your PS5 as well as your smartphone at the exact same time, meaning that I could either be playing my God of War, whatever game that I like to play and pulling in that audio. And then let's say my phone decides to ring and I answer it. I can also pull in the call audio inside of the earbuds and it's going to automatically mix that audio and it mixes it damn good too, man. To me, this is a feature that I feel is something that I like the most out of these buds right here. And that is mainly the reason why I continue to actually use these because I just love this feature so much. I can either listen to music on my phone while I'm also being able to hear my gameplay on my PS5 or my PlayStation portal. But again, I got to be fair, man. I had to take away another point with these and deduct $50 from the price because for $200, PlayStation not including some type of active noise cancellation in these was a huge letdown to me. I felt like for $200, I would have expected some type of uh, active noise cancellation because if I was to go out there and buy just any pair of $200 uh, earbuds, for the most part, I feel like they're going to include active noise cancellation in these, especially when, especially when you guys are a brand that is built on audio. Like you guys have a whole Sony audio division that you guys could have easily tapped into. And I just felt like they kind of missed the mark on that uh, when it comes to these. But I do feel like they gained a point back for me when it comes to this AI feature that uses some type of like noise reduction to it when it comes to the microphone. So for example, let's say you guys are the one person in your crew who always opening that bag of chips or you wrestling with some type of food while you're talking with your friends and they can hear literally every single bag of Lay's and Cheeto chips that you guys have opened up and you crunching all in their ear and all of that. With these post explorers right here, it uses some type of AI noise reduction feature that's going to 
of just wipe out all of that noise and all of that background noise and it focuses on just your voice. And to me, I think that is the shining star feature when it comes to these earbuds right here. It is a really dope feature, man, and it works damn good. Now, the next thing we got to talk about, y'all, and this is, again, another love-hate relationship with it, and that is the connectivity on whether it's easy to be able to connect this up to something like my PS5 or my PlayStation Portal. Now, in my opinion, this is another area that these shine the most, and that is how easy that PlayStation Link technology connects to my PlayStation here or even my PlayStation Portal or even a PC. However, the main issue that I'm having when it comes to connectivity that really don't make the PlayStation Link technology look that good, and that is PlayStation Link's connection range. I gotta call a spade a spade, y'all. The range on these is not that good at all. Like literally, y'all, if I got up right now and I walk clean off of this camera and walk right into the next room in my studio here, it will drop connection every single time. As far as the range go, I would say you're probably only getting somewhere around like 10 to 12 feet before these bad boys here is gonna start to cut out on you. When it comes to something like my end zone buzz, I can literally go all the way freaking outside and then buzz will still be connected up. I'm telling you y'all, those are goaded when it comes to connectivity. So two things here, it's good when these are connected to devices, connecting them up, no problem at all. But if you decide to want to stay talking to your homeboys or whatever, or your crew, uh, and you want to go grab some water outside in the next room, Forget it, man. That signal gonna drop every single time. So overall, man, how do I feel about these, man? Do I feel that these are worth you guys spending your hard-earned money on it, your ducats, your shillings, your skrilla, and all of that, right? Or maybe you guys should just wait for another company to come out with something better. I'm gonna say this and break this down like this. If you guys are a PlayStation Portal gamer outside of your home, right? Say you like to play this bad boy here outside your home and you need that in-ear audio, then I think, I'm gonna be honest, I think these are solid and I think these... I think these are good for that and you're gonna get decent audio. But if you guys only play your PlayStation Portal in-house, then I would say stick with the headphones that you guys may have and just plug in the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack right here at the bottom of them. And then, you know, just go on your way with that. Or you can wait for the post at least to drop next year and come back here and see, you know, just kind of what I think about those before you guys make a decision. However, depending on the fit in your ears and being comfortable for me, these were not the most comfortable as, you know, I kind of had to continue like uh, readjusting them in order for them to be able to work. And for me, having to readjust them every single time and it kind of throws off the fit inside of your ears, which it's a whole nother thing. But if it was me, I would just, you know, just kind of roll with the pair of gaming headphones. So something like the Astro A40s that I use whenever I want to plug in right into the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack that's right underneath the portal here. But if you're somebody out there, man, and you mainly game in the house, then I would say, you know, just try maybe another pair of earbuds or gaming peripherals that you already like that can connect wirelessly to your PS5 and just pull in the audio from there. And I'll show you guys how to do that in this video that's right up here. But Let's say you guys are a PS5 or a PC gamer and you don't have the PlayStation Portal and you guys are looking to actually get these for it. Then for me, straight up, y'all, I would say no. I would not buy these or spend your money on them just yet. I would hold off on possibly maybe the Gen 2 version. Maybe they're going to make some updates for this with active noise cancellation and different things like that. Mainly because I felt like these are not the most comfortable for fitting in my ears when it comes to the design. I felt like the audio on it is just okay. I didn't have that wow moment that I was expecting and most importantly it does not have active noise cancellation like I just mentioned um, in them for you know the $200 price tag that I would expect it to have so based on those reasons for me I'm gonna say it's tough for me to recommend these right now to you guys to spend your hard-earned money your duckish your shillings and all of that on them right now for the price of $200 if it was like $150, then maybe I would say, yeah, you can go possibly get these a try and just kind of see how you like them. But for $200, I feel like these got to be a slam dunk in order for me to be able to recommend them to you guys. Now, I do have a video coming up here where I'm going to show you guys how to actually connect other Bluetooth devices up to your PlayStation portal that don't have the PlayStation link. So definitely make sure you guys tune in for that video because... You don't want to miss that one, man. So hopefully, man, you guys enjoyed this video and I helped you guys make a decision uh, or validate your purchase. And if I did, man, and you rock with the content and how I deliver it and how I bring it, then go ahead and hit that like button right now, man, and consider subbing to the channel as our goal next year, man, is to hit that 200K subscriber mark, man. And with y'all help, I know we can get there. See you guys in the next one. Squad, we out. <laughs>